Now, this morning, we're talking about leadership. And uh, within hours of Ed Miliband's resignation, Labour MPs were all turning their attention to potentially bruising leadership contests and uh, would unfold over the summer. And, of course, the Lib Dems as well. They're looking for a new leader as our, our, our UKIP. And also, we're talking about David Cameron. He's going to have a different leadership style. So we thought we'd discuss the leadership this morning. You know, what is your advice for, uh, for David Cameron and what sort of style he should adopt? Is leadership the sort of thing that's innate? Can it be learned? Love to hear your comments this morning. Times 8.33, listen to Inspirational Breakfast. And I'm just joined um, by... Um by two wonderful men this morning in the studio, Martin Eden, he's our um, political editor and also general director of the Evangelical Alliance, Steve Clifford. And we've got lots of calls as well on the line, people wanting to ask questions. But before we go to them, just quickly, can I just ask you, um, we were just talking about uh, what Cameron's going to have to kind of diffuse nationalism on uh, north or south of the border. And is, is that, is that think that's important, Steve? Yeah, I, I mean, I don't think the, the issue of fragmentation across the UK is simply one of, of nationalism. I think there clearly is the question of Scotland and how does Scotland relate to uh, to England particularly, but also to Wales and, uh, and to Northern Ireland. But we've also got to face up to the fact that, that London voted um, for Labour uh, in, in large numbers. Uh, a lot of the northern cities, uh, particularly the, the, kind of the, the kind of poorer parts of urban cities, uh, voted Labour. We've got UKIP who have who've raised pretty much 4 million voters from across the UK. So there's a lot of fragmentation across the United Kingdom. There is, there is not, you can't say the UK voted Conservative. Uh, parts of the UK, particularly England, Middle England voted Conservative. So how does David Cameron govern and bring some cohesion across the United Kingdom, I think is one of the great challenges he, that he faces. And certainly the perception, once you get north of Birmingham, the perception is that the Conservative cabinet, David Cameron particularly, represents a particular kind of privileged, posh, ex-public schoolboy, and the, the need for him and his cabinet to get out of London, to get out of Westminster, to listen to some of the, the, the real concerns of, of the, the rest of the UK, I think is really important. Well, we've got um, uh, Yvonne from Edmonton on the line because I think you know let's look let's look at some perhaps good examples of biblical leaders and uh, um, Yvonne from Ed- Edmonton. Uh, good morning to you, Yvonne. Hi, good morning to you all. Um, What's your example uh, quick, of good, good uh, um, biblical leader? Quick comment, really. I've always just you know admired and, and taken back by Solomon. Solomon of the choice, really. Um, I'm just paraphrasing, but he had this discourse, you know, when God appeared to him, and he's like, God saying, like, what can I do for you? Solomon said, you know what? Give me wisdom and knowledge that I may lead these people for. Who is able to govern this great people of yours? You know, Solomon humble asked for that wisdom to do that. Without God's wisdom, you cannot lead a people or a country. And even though we have politicians who are saying that, you know, they are Christians, I don't see anything with the three main parties that say to me that you are Christian. They are for everything that God is against. You know, you look at even Pharaoh in Egypt. He was a pag- he was, Pharaoh was pagan. He had a dream that he could not, they could not um, discern. They got um, Joseph to, to discern, the, to, to tell them the dream. And what did he do? He put Joseph in place to mm-hmm. govern his country. Mm-hmm. You have so many Christian MPs who I think would do well, but they are like sidelined. They are more have to go in they more have to go in line with these polit- okay. you know, with so called leaders just, who just, say they are Christian. Just quick just quickly, just give us a couple of uh, tenets what you think um, you know makes a good leader, personality traits that make a good leader. To me, you have to have integrity. Mm-hmm. You need integrity. And of course, as I say, you need wisdom. That to me is your knowledge that you're going to have, how are you going to use it? You may have that knowledge, but how are you going to put that in place? You cannot lead somebody if you haven't got the wisdom, you haven't got that understanding, if you haven't got a, a, a relationship with God to reveal certain things to you. Mm-hmm. Okay. How are you going to govern? I'm not being funny, but you look on countries where they have, you know, sort of strong Christian principles, and they don't, they're not doing as badly as we do, as, our, as we are doing. Thank you so much there. That's Yvonne from Edmonton giving us some words of wisdom herself, saying that the, the actual leaders um, need um, good wisdom. Martin? Well, I'm not entirely in agreement with her. You see, Solomon, like his father, had political wisdom, but his private life 
His marriages, his numerous wives and concubines, doesn't sound to me a very wise thing. I certainly couldn't cope with those pressures. So I'm not sure he was. For me, Daniel is the model of b- biblical leadership, a man who was single-mindedly centred on God and faithful to God despite all the implications, became a top leader, top official in two empires that were hostile to his faith, and yet he remained faithful to God. And Steve? Yeah, I mean, I, I suppose I want to go to Jesus in terms of the the model for leadership that he he brings to us. Um, he brings us a model which is is very counter cultural, actually, in, in our context. Um, the Jesus who modelled washing the disciples' feet just hours before he's going to go to the cross. Uh, the Jesus who lays down his life for his followers, for, 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 for those that were uh, committing themselves to him. The Jesus who, when two of his disciples are having an argument about who's the greatest, who should sit on the right, who should sit on the left, um, he says to them, he basically brings the challenge to them, whoever wants to be great among you must be the servant, whoever wants to be first must be the slave. So there's something in Jesus' model of leadership, which is about servanthood, it's about laying down the, their life, it's around washing um, the disciples' feet. And I think um, this is a very countercultural uh, approach to leadership that Jesus brings to us. But I think it's, it's at the heart of how a Christian leader approaches their leadership. Uh, and it is that I'm there to serve. I want the very best for the people that I'm serving. Why not start your day with Inspirational Breakfast, Monday to Fridays from 7am, Only on Premier Christian Radio, where faith comes to life.